Challenges in life are inevitable. Some are visible and some aren't. I'm James, I'm 28, and I have Frederick's attacks there. Currently, I am a bit uncoordinated, but FA will put me in a wheelchair and eventually rob me of my independence. FA is a um, neuromuscular condition, it's progressive. It's the most common genetically inherited ataxia. It mainly attacks the nervous system. It also affects heart and other organs to cause um, heart problems, heart failure. And it's the result of uh, lacking a protein called protexin, which is very important in the cell. Cannot be conventionally cured. There's a hurdle that the whole family is jumping over. It's the most devastating thing that's ever happened to my family. I was born in New Zealand in 1985 and grew up in the 90s in Palmerston North with my family. I currently live independently in Palmerston North and study at Massey University. Hi, I'm Diane and I'm Mum. My name is Brent. Uh, I'm Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I had a relatively typical childhood growing up. I am the eldest of five kids. How boring life would be with less siblings. First there is me, then Liz, next my brother Joe, then Therese, and my baby sister Lydia. And of course, Mum and Dad. What a great bunch of people. Creating innovative ways to work out helps me stay physically fit while challenging myself keeps me mentally healthy. Good nutrition is a key part of both. FA currently affects 1 in 100,000 people. About 1 in 100 people carry the gene, and when two carriers have kids, there is a 25% chance of FA. Today I'm Joe, uh, I am 22 years old, and I have free drugs at taxi. Hi, I'm Therese Byrne, I am 20 years old, and I have free drugs at taxi. We do not have to face FA alone. But I know how difficult this condition can be, and knowing my brother and sister have to deal with similar challenges is heartbreaking. Incredible, incredible sadness and a lot of grief. And yeah, probably guilt is another thing, because I wanted to be so I could share it. Our Kiwi family is going to take, take a bit of a hit. Everything changed in April 2008 when we first got diagnosed. The diagnosis was a very grim experience. I remember we had to go up to Auckland. I remember the diagnosis being very... very stark for a cold. Really, we were going up to Auckland to see this guy, thinking we would find some answers and that there'd be some options of treatments, we'd be able to get some things sorted. He went through a number of tests uh, while we were in the room, basically, when he examined all three of the kids while we were all sitting in his, in his surgery. Um, and, uh, and then he... He basically sat us down and said he thought he knew what it was. And I remember thinking, great, this will be so good. And then he said the words Friedrich's ataxia, and I thought into my brain, what the heck is that? And he didn't actually give us a warning to say that this is, I'm sorry, this isn't good news. He told us very quietly, uh, a very cautious way, uh, 
what he thought it was. We had Frederick say takes here. And when he started to talk about what it was, I thought, oh no, this is not good. And Joe and Therese seemed just to take that. But I remember James getting quite upset, realising he clipped on very quickly that this was really serious. I don't think I totally understood the implications of the diagnosis at the time. I resent the way he put that out to us. I remember we actually had to press him uh, for, for details. He, he didn't want to give details. He, he didn't, well I could say he didn't want to scare us. So I found that a very, quite a difficult day, not only for me, but um, seeing how the kids reacted to that too. That was quite, that was a, that was a very hard and very sad trip to all. We just went into complete and utter shock and grief walked out of that appointment and looked at each other and thought what should we do now we were going to stay in Auckland the night and we decided we were just the kids wanted to go home so we drove all the way back to Palmerston North and in the car I remember saying to Brent I think the kids might have fallen asleep our life has changed and it's changed forever and I just remember crying through the night and just being devastated absolutely For the first few years, I felt completely lost. My life was out of my control. Now, five years on, I'm starting to accept that changes must be made. For the past year, I've used a walking stick, and recently, I joined the gym. It is not the strongest of the species that survives nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. Due to a phase progressive nature, the biggest battle is in my head. The endless cycles of, of grief that it involves. Although there is currently no cure, there is hope. The Fredericks Ataxia Research Alliance is committed to raising funds for research. The ongoing research will eventually lead to a cure. To donate, visit curefay.org. Far Ambassador Carl Bryant suffers from FA. The challenges he puts in front of himself are an inspiration to me. I think it affects us positively in that we are closer. I'm not struggling against it. I am doing what I can within the boundaries that it sets. Family and friends give me strategies which help deal with life. I appreciate what I have got. FA means something different to everyone. For me, it's complicated, depressing, but creates perseverance. Challenging, it's devastating, and it's awkward. Uh, boring, ruthless, uh, but ultimately revealing. Obstacle, family, and adversity. Wobbly, um, egghead, because you're all very much intellectuals, um, and uh, interesting. Yeah. Unbelievable, horrific, and unfair. Difficult. 
challenging is a good word. Silver linings. It is really something with silver linings.